Right, OK, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm here in sunny Tenerife. I'm at Buena Vista Golf Club. We're going to have a closer look around this golf club in the next few days. But uh, first of all, let me say thank you for them for letting me use this golf course to test the new Ping G410 and a few other clubs. This is a driver video today and uh, we'll be going right throughout the range in the next couple of days. But first of all, I want to talk about how this driver looks because it's considerably different, certainly at least from the underneath, from anything that I've seen from Ping before. And in my eyes, quite possibly the best looking driver that Ping have ever produced. Here's a few images going over the screen for you now to give you an idea. And I'll start up on the bottom end. It's very much this matte black finish with this, uh, these red insets. But what you'll notice there, and we're going to talk about it very soon, is the ability to shift some weight into a draw and fade bias. But then when you flip the club over onto the crown, which is generally what we're looking at from the dress, then you notice some differences as well. The turbulators are still there. Wouldn't be my choice. They're too pronounced for me. They stick up far too much. The Dragonfly technology, that's disappeared and that's built into the crown this time, but the pattern at least is removed from that uh, top edge. But looks wise, underneath, stunning for me still on the top, would like to see them turbulators removed. But we need to find out the tech spec. Why have Ping brought this model out? What is it looking to do different than they've got out there on the marketplace already? So I'm going to go back over to the UK, into Tiopo Towers, and we'll see what Ping have got to say. Right, so the first thing we need to have a look at is the back of this club and the movable weight system that's been introduced for the first time by Ping in this driver. We've seen it before on many drivers, but never from Ping. And if you look at this diagram that I've thrown up for you now, very simple and straightforward, three positions, fade, neutral, and a draw bias. Uh, basically, what Ping is saying is that the 16 gram tungsten weight uh, in the different three locations that you can put it in, uh, can make a considerable difference to the draw neutral fade bias. Uh, basically, they're saying 20 yards between the draw and fade position. That'll be interesting to see what happens out on the course very shortly. As you can see from the top of the crown, Dragonfly is no longer visible from the top of the crown. It's built within the body of the head now. We see a forged face in this again, um, and there is multiple positions in terms of being able to fine tune this driver to fit yourself. It's available as an SFT model, uh, number of shafts available as well. Uh, but I think that's all we need to say about the actual makeup and the technology in this club. I think it's really what you want to see is performance. So let's get back over to Tenerife. Right, so there's a tech spec. The waves are crashing, it's blue skies. I just can't get out weight now to get and hit this thing and that's all that matters. I've already got dry ball data, but we're gonna play it in and around this golf course. I'll see what tweaks and changes I might make with it. And uh, we'll see where it all finishes up in a summary at the very end of all this. So a couple of drives off this tee and uh, again i'm not really i've not hit anything pure just yet but what i'm also finding is that uh, the normal shot my normal swing the type of shot shape that i like to hit i'm really struggling with the current setup so i'm going to make a few tweaks and changes i'm going to try it literally from we're in the neutral position i'm going to change it into a draw and then maybe again we'll end up trying this fade position as well to try as many options as i can to try and just get a little bit more performance i'm not quite getting out this driver just yet at least anyway Not sure how much of this tee position you can see from the shot tracer, but it's an absolute stunning uh, tee shot, a real risk and reward right over the corner, but it's pretty much into the sea and the cliff tops uh, to the left. And I've gone left, whether it's a long enough carry, I don't know. But uh, more importantly, what do I think of the strike? It was a lot better strike. I've just changed this into a, a draw bias. And uh, for whatever reason, it could be purely all in the head. Uh, it's a lot more comfortable a position. Um, and I feel as though I'm getting a lot better strike um, from the club face as well. But um, we'll see how it goes in this draw setting. It's a few more balls like this, I think.
Right, so it's summary time. You've seen the shot traces. You've seen my opinion around the golf course. I made quite a few changes. Uh, ended up having the club in a draw bias is what I favoured. A little bit confused because um, same CB Alter stiff shaft as what is in my Ping G400 Max, but in terms of head shaft combination, they felt nothing like. I talk about feel as well. It was a very hard sound out of the club face, which again, I wasn't particularly keen on, I'm afraid. Uh, looks superb, but at this stage, I'm really starting to struggle. Let's have a look at dry ball data numbers and see what it did there. So here's the numbers in screen, up on screen for you now. 142 ball speed, 16.4 launch. Massive variables in there. 136 ball speed right the way up to, uh, what is it, 144 ball speed, 145, almost 146. Um, two five spin, massive variables, 1700 right up to three and a half thousand spin. 241 overall carry distance, average that is, but again, variables 231 up to 253. So as you can see there, massive variables that I kept mentioning in dry ball data, and there was massive variables out there. And of course, I tried to make more changes out in the course. Like I said, I used this weight shift and put it in a draw bias. I took one degree off and knocked it down to a 9.5 head. Um, but for me, I just could not get on with it. I couldn't produce the kind of numbers and confidence really, that was the key word. I never at any point in any of the setups stood over the ball out here on the course and felt confident and knew what I was doing with it. I really did struggle. And it could well be it was just a case of, I've been hitting the ball maybe, uh, or putting the swing uh, with this club together on ball not too great over the last couple of weeks since I've been testing it. But I don't know, it's an odd one. And in the interesting video for me is two things is when I put G400 Max, which I've got with me now, I'll put them very much in a head-to-head -head with the same swing that I've got on that day. And also, it's all about what team averages opinions are as well. I'd be great to get the five handicaps uh, together, let them all try it out in the different shaft head combinations and see what their overall opinion is of this Ping G410 uh, driver. But for me, I have to say, just a little bit disappointed and I never quite got that combination right with this driver. And it'd have to be right now, it's a, it's a bit of a thumbs down, I'm afraid. Anyway, as ever, I try and make it as honest uh, as I possibly can. But your comments, greatly appreciated. Stick them down below, thumbs up if you like the video. I'll see you soon. I'm gonna carry on. I've got plenty of videos to come from Buena Vista, both of the course, and we're carrying on with the Ping uh, G410 Fairway and Hybrid. Let's hope I get on a bit better with those two.